properly give it and give us this opportunity to be able to sort of give you a small insight into what we deliver um and have done like andy said for many years now um throughout wessex uh we're lucky enough to be able to be supported by our du um who have given us sort of the the capability to have sort of specialist training which we've needed throughout and plant in, in recent months that we've sort of been supported heavily um for plant and everything else to be and enable us to sort of transition into using hardwood um this is one of the sort of ones i delivered recently on behalf of uh wessex our team um like i say we're predominantly both based for wessex in our the inner du but we, we're given the opportunity to sort of support and um work alongside and help others across the region and now sort of spreading ourselves out we, we're delivering work on sort of kent vines the isle of Wight. we've done some on the isle of which was an experience <laughs> um, never to be repeated but yeah no no it, it was it's great and from our point of view the more you see obviously i did but personally I'd, i'm in my 36th year jake's a few less than that <laughs> um, but even now I'd, I'd be a brave man to say that i've, I've seen everything and it's it to have that sort of ability to be out, it, you know, I welcome the, the opportunity to sort of do work on all different variant systems um, throughout. So, yeah, so just just moving on, bit of an insight. Introduction, like I say, I started 1984 um, and at the, age of, at the age of 16, joined the railway into every works team which at that stage um, had the ownership and responsibility for renewal of longitudinal timbers inspection. Whereas, bizarrely enough, they didn't do any sort of track work. The track was always maintained by the P-Way, whereas we would um, do the, the, the maintenance and repairs to the longitudinal timber systems. Uh, um, like I say, that personally, now we, we're in a position where we, we're doing we manage and deliver the, the annual detailed inspections for Wessex Inner, um, along with Jake and two others. Um, we form sort of, Jake and myself form 50% of our team. So it is a small management team, but we, we sort of oversee projects from inception through to back. So, and but this is all works that sort of DU led. Uh, like I say, a lot of us, stuff we do we sort of identified the need for specialist training which working at heights was one of our sort of key issues um we, we sort of oh, i say we were supported in sort of facilitating the external use of supplies to do um to have specialist training we, we all sort of sat down and now we we sort of all hold the confidence and equipment to be able to work at heights which has paid for itself in in a matter of months um, we can now even do inspections below the structure. Um, so it's, it, it, you know, it's a great opportunity. So, like I say, today, <laughs> our biggest challenge for today was trying to keep this interesting. <laughs> um, so we sort of broke it down into sections, um, give you a sort of insight into where we are and where we're going. So, as I say, from the past, I joined 84 into the Heavy Works team and give you a sort of bit of an insight. That was a, a team of 160 staff, predominantly all wages, solely based for the Wessex Inner, um, varying trades. And we, we had a team of six inspectors, inspectors to maintain and do the examinations of the structures, um, which to give the opportunity now, I'd love it. <laughs> um, but um, obviously following privatization, we basically went from the Friday having all these staff to or the Monday, and we had none. Um, the, the ownership went onto the DU sections, onto the P-Way sections, and they, they, that's, uh, that's that's the time that, foolishly, I, I joined the P-Way section at that time, so I sort of transferred over. Um, and, you know, we went through, we went for a lean time, you know, like I say, we had six inspectors under the, under the original sort of regime, and we went from that down to one, one guy who'd done the whole of Wessex, 
uh, inner and outer doing the detailed inspections. Um, obviously, you know, did something had to give, and um, it was unfortunate we sort of worked for we had a, we had a derailment and a near derailment, um, both directly attributable to the failures of the long barrier systems, gauge widening on the system um, in the early 90s. And that sort of led the investigation sort of led to the sort of what we already knew, if you like, in that we didn't really appreciate and understand as a, as a company the, the sort of the risks associated with, with the sort of systems we had. Um, and it was at that time we come up with the first sort of register, um, which was, you know, we sort of did that gave us a register of predictive lives of timbers. So that's, that was really, prior to that, we had nothing. Um, and they, we sort of, that sort of started the process off as to where we are today. Present, where we are now, far greater understanding of systems, failure mechanisms, and the, oh, sorry, te technological advances um, in what we use, how we, how we sort of monitor the work, how we monitor the systems, and examination processes, just massive sort of change. With, I'd say within the last five years, I think Jake has sort of, Jake come in at the start of the process and is sort of overseeing that. Um, and, you know, these guys far outweigh me technology-wise, technology so, you know, it, it, it sort of leads you through where that's going. Um, and the training and the upskilling of the team, obviously, like, as I said, we're, we're a small team, we're a small team of four for the Wessex Inner. Um, the, the the need to sort of develop staff internally is, is sort of under review as we, as we speak. And obviously the, the, the standard changes that have come into force, um, the development and implementation of the long bear management plan gives a sort of transparent side for everyone to be able to have our knowledge, if you like. So we, we sort of constantly update the long bear management plans and God forbid anything happened to any of us or anyone, Anyone else can go into that long bear management plan and know, understand where we were, where that system sits, and how it's maintained. <laughs> For the future, um, where do we go with this? You know, what I mean, obviously, this is this would be my wish list, if you like, personally. Um, development and understanding of the, of the staff and team in levels. If we can bring that into the TUs, fantastic. You know, at the moment we're using sort of specialist contract teams. Um, which works for us at the moment, but as a company, obviously it's expensive. Um, formulation, probably the biggest one for me, uh, if I can see that pre-retirement, <laughs> is the formulation of bespoke cyclical maintenance. You know, this, this has been something I've been moaning on about for many years, um, in that as a company, we maintain, we don't maintain bridges. We, we renew bridges, we wait for them to break, and then we go back and renew them again. If, if, if we can get to a point where we've undertaken the cyclical maintenance significantly, you know, the, the cost saving and the sort of safety aspects, if you can maintain the system, it will last and, you know, it'll last forever. But it's you know, far greater than what we're getting out of them now. So, and, and that, you know, a, a final one for me would be to sort of build a closer relationship with structures team. Um, and that, that may vary area to area bad where the, I, I speak for Wessex in that we were, we're almost two separate company structures and sort of maintainers um, and the majority of the, the sort of full renewals that are undertaken on Wessex um, are sort of deliverable on capex funding so majority are um, sort of con specialist contract they're sublet to a sort of subcontractors rather than held with it in-house. Um, now, obviously, if we can get to a point, the, at the moment, the, the, the specialist contract teams are telling us what we need, whereas the surely should be, in my eyes, we should be telling them. We're left with the system to maintain, um, and we, a, a lot of the stuff we're being left with is almost unmaintainable, it's hard to maintain, um, and without specialist knowledge and equipment. So that's basically mm. where we are. So enough from me for now. I'm going to hand over to Jake, who's competent, and to, you know, Jake's going to run through the, the detailed inspection side. Um, and yeah, please welcome Jake. Thank you. There we go.
Hello, everyone. So, uh, as Greg said, he's had 36. I've only had seven, so a little bit less experience, but here we go. So, I started seven years ago, WDU. We were doing mainly renewals of everything, switches and crossings, uh, timbers. Started the P-Way down at Guildford and Woking in 2018. Uh, so, it was literally my first time of inspections. So, I worked with timbers themselves, but not inspected them as in fill out the TEFs, et cetera. So when I first joined four years ago, all old methods, you'd have the previous TEF form to what we have now, uh, the 3014. And it was literally go out, have a look, visually use a trusty old boot, use a trusty old hammer or prodder or whatever you, to basically beat the timber and give it less life. So <laughs> try and find the decay and try and see how bad it was but the only method we have other than drill it and make more holes was give it a beat and see see what happens i suppose uh so in december 2019 the standards started changing so that was the first time the new 3014 got put in front of us we sort of had the first sight of that i think and they said right go crazy go out on site tell us what you think um if it works if there's anywhere that we can improve as in, does it flow on site, should we say? So it, that was helpful. We helped them out as well with that. Uh, April 2020 was the first time that I'd ever seen a probe drill. So this is where it really started changing. So we started off with a tool called the resistor graph, um, very similar to what we use now, but it was more your interpretation rather than software. Uh, so basically we were going out drilling the timbers um, and basically life in them as a whole still. So still doing your visuals, still doing your other checks, but drilling it also. Uh, and then July 21. So we had that for about a year. July 21, we got the IML PD 500. So that drill, exactly the same, but slightly more technical. So it drills the timbers and the software tells you how much decay you've got. You don't have to decipher that yourself. So it literally tells you I've got a few pictures as we go through. So, um, so again, this was the sort of caliber of timbers we're seeing. So as you can see, the trusty old product there on your left hand side, uh, that yellow stick, should we call it? So you can see the holes that we used to create, um, basically find your decay spots, give it a hit, see how far the product goes in. It had like a metal rounded end on the end. So we ended up, well, that was about 150 to 200 mil. So if you get that far in, you're thinking, oh, all right, there's definitely decay. Um, again, you get decay on the side. So, I mean, that was just beaten to death at one point. Um, but yeah, this is the sort of issue we were having. So you're basically creating more issue with the old methods. You're, you're creating more water regress into the timbers. You're creating more pockets of decay. You're structurally making that timber worse. So obviously, touch woods, we, we had no that I know of the ramets on the Wessex area, Wessex area. Um, so very, very well done to Frank for getting through that stage. Um, but obviously coming into now, um, so this was the resistor graph output. So basically, sorry, let me just move that up a little bit. So this was a wheel timber in Waterloo station. Um, it's in a troughed out uh, structure. So the only face of that timber that you can actually visually inspect is the top. You cannot get to any other side of that timber. So the resistor graph basically gave us a method of getting inside that timber without beating it and sounding it, should we say, because before that, that is literally what we would have done. We would have beat it. Can you hear it hollowing? No. Um, this timber actually only had three loose screws on it, believe it or not. So it was a eight and a half meter timber, three loose fixings throughout the whole length. Um, and as you can tell, the picture speaks a thousand words there. So you've got the red line through the timber that that is the location of that drilling. So as you can see, the flat lines on the, the printout, should we say, obviously that interprets the K. So the old resistor graph is literally, we would input them colors. So where you're getting the tree rings, the, the growth rings, green, brilliant. Red is your flat spot, so the decay. So that gave us great insight when that timber came out we could literally drill it, right, this is what we're getting on the resistor graph and compare to what we're actually seeing in person. So it was it was really useful. 
Again, 20 to 21 was when we started using these new tests, so they were a bit more in depth. We started using uh, Amber Trolley, um, so that is basically a te technical way of getting your geometry. So you would twist uh, your gauge and your um, crack cant or cross level. Um, so basically, if we go on a bit further, so coming in, so this is an Amber Trolley output. So I'll do it slightly different. So basically, it's a very simple Excel. Uh, chuck the data in, make a little graph, put a key down the side. So what I've started doing in the last previous years, so this particular location, I've been there for three years in a row. So I can black and red lines, which was what it was prior to some maintenance that we delivered. You can visually see how bad the gauge is, uh, what we've got. You can pinpoint the timber joints locations. So you've got timber three, timber two, timber one. You can see exactly where they fall and you can see where your issues are in plain sight rather than guessing. Uh, obviously, we've got the 3021. Uh, the main issue with that, in my opinion, on an inspection front is some of the timbers that we've done are 12 meters long. So doing your start, middle and end, you're not necessarily getting your three meter twist values because it's over that. So the 3021, the supervisor inspection, it only tells you to take three gauge readings. So this wouldn't potentially pick up a fault if it was there. Um, I'll do this for the gauge. So this example is gauge. Uh, I'll do exactly the same for cross level. So assuming you, you know your design cross level or can, uh, you can run a line through and put your existing and what it should be on there. Also for twist. So you basically just change your standard limits down the side, but pretty simple. But so this is going into the IML PD 500 now. So we've still got the outputs up the top there. So this is the software and technology doing the uh, information for us here. So we're not telling it it's decay, it's telling us it's decay. So this particular location, again, a troughed out timber, absolute nightmare to inspect. That timber again, I, I don't believe it had any loose screws whatsoever. Um, there was visible decay on top, but it's actual fixings and integrity for fixings was fine. Um, it wasn't until we started probe drilling it, we thought, blimey, that's a bit worse than we thought. So we're looking at like 80, 90 percent of that timber being decay. Um, as you can see, it didn't come out in one piece. So it was a bit piecemeal taken out. It actually took longer to get this one out than it did put the next one in. <laughs> so that's a first forever. Um, I think that was probably the first job that that actually happened. But um, yeah, so the PD500 is brilliant in the sense that we we basically drill at intervals. So we drill at every base plate. So that's our particular method. So we, we drill at every base plate throughout the bridge. If we find heavy spots of decay, we can do some further in-depth drillings. So we can go in at different angles. We can go in from the side. If you can get to the bottom, you could get to the bottom. Uh, and, but in this particular location, mainly what we did here was uh, vertically, so straight top to bottom, um, because in trough timbers, generally, they're rotten bottom up. So by the time you see that decay, you know for a fact you've got an issue. Um, if you start losing fixings, you've got decay on the top. Um, yeah, you've got a problem. So again, this is another location. So the furthest left was Aldershot. Couldn't see it. Full wood deck throughout the forefoot. No issues. If you hit that timber with your old method, that timber sounds good. And that is the importance of this probe drill. You, if you cannot see it, you cannot beat the probe drill, in my opinion, to check the integrity of the wood. Um, so obviously, this came out shortly after that. Again, troughed out timbers here. So this was actually on renewals. So we didn't just take it out for the sake of it. So we were re renewing this troughed out timber. This one was in Brighton. Again, came out in pieces, as you can see on the right-hand picture there. Um, again, troughed out timber. Can't see anything. Probably worked as funders again, and we, we took it out. And now we're in a much better understanding of we knew the trough timbers would rot bottom up, but now we can see that. Before we get to the decay on top, okay, we've got collapsing. You can see the middle picture has got quite a lot of base plate packing, which would only assume that that timber is compressing or slightly squashing or decaying bottom up. So this is where you're getting your top faults. You're getting your cross-level issues, hence your signs of decay. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's been brilliant. The last four years have changed massively. We've come on leaps and bounds. Um, takes a lot longer, don't get me wrong, but it's it's a lot safer and you get a lot more information. Um, so yeah, leaps and bounds on that one. Um, back over to Greg. So we're going to go back onto surveys and designs. So the renewal stage now. Thank you very much, Jake. Right, so obviously just give you a bit of an insight into what we do. The DU potentially, with you, with you, we'd, we'd like to get forward also, um, and we seem to be picking more up in recent years, but there's this sort of DU is more sort of isolated renewals, uh, timbers one here and there, et cetera, et cetera. From that point of view, um, we still we still follow the same process regardless. It, it, it gives us an insight. It gives us the ability to be able to be, if we if at the survey, we, we're doing a full, as if we're doing a complete bridge renewal, we can then go back to the, they ain't me for it, um, but we go back to the, the TMEs and say, right, we need to change the whole system or we need to adjust. If you want to correct the geometry, then we need to make these adjustments. So structure type and long barrier system and long barrier system. Type of structure, that's first consideration. Is it a trough? Is it? Is it an open structure? Is it going to cause us issues for access? Predicting life expiries as a system. The DUs will look at isolated timbers and they're saying to me, right, we've got one timber, it's got 18 months left life expiry, whereas the others have got four years. Now, if I go there, we, we look at it as a system. It might only be the case that, and you'll see with, with one of the sort of bridges we, we sort of highlighted here in, um, it, to go there, if the geometry is wrong on on the on the timbers with with the, they're proposing to leave, then we're we're stuck with that. If the geometry is wrong, then we're going to have to lift up to that what, whatever we're leaving. So that's that's one of our considerations. Track geometry, dynamic. Obviously, the TRV recordings. Uh, we look at sort of probably the last six six runs, and we look where we are. And we also take you as Jake said, we do, we do an amber amber trolley run. Uh, which gives us sort of static information. From that, obviously, structure clearance, suspicions, root scan, the whole structure at two and a half metre intervals throughout, regardless of where we are, even if we're not proposing in the alignment. This goes off to the national gradient team. Um, question existing system. One of my, you know, one of the biggest things, probably because of the years I've been here, um, going back to British Rail days, we used to install timbers. I, I think the guy that used to measure man, dad saying wrong with his tape measure because he, you know, everyone would be 100 mil too deep and three and a half meters too long. So you, you, you quickly learn how to sort of, the timbers would go in and they go in at whatever level. Um, and, and I, you know, and I, I'm saying, you know, we now we work to seven mil tolerance. We probably worked to 20 back then. So question the system, question, question why it's like it, how it's got to that point. Um, so that's, you know, that's, that's key for me. Does the system work? Can it be improved? Purely from a source, again, refer back to the cyclical maintenance side of it. Can we maintain it? If we can't, then there's something wrong with the system. If we can't maintain that from track level, we've got an issue straight away as the maintainer. Simplicity for cyclical maintenance, just explain that one. Renewal time frame versus access. Have we got time? What, what access have we been given to, to, to do the works, to undertake the works? Nine times out of ten, you know, we'd, we'd be able, if we're doing one or two, but if we're then proposing, you'll see from another one as we go on, um, we have to stage it. So we might have to stage it and break it down into sections, what we do as and when. Do we require any on track machines, tamping, follow ups? A lot of the work we do, we address the sort of ballasted approaches for. 40 to 60 metres either side. Um, nine, nine, 90% of the time, last weekend, prime example, we did, that's done with road bells, jacks, and, and that's how we go. So if we can adjust it with a sort of on track machine, so the top sort of tie that work in with it, fantastic. And from that point, once we've got all the information, it goes to IDR and then off to the van review, and we sort of oversee the van review through to sort of approval in principle. Just onto a few projects we've done. Volkley Viaduct. If I was to design a long barrier system, this would be it. It's perfect. From that point of view, it's the most simplest system we've got. It's 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 totally 
the timbers are held up off the deck so they, they've got a sort of full air circulation around. Fantastic system. The problem with this one is the location is three, three and a half miles from the nearest access point and it's over the estuary. Um, and we found that to our cost. Delivered this one in February um, in false five gales. So it wasn't was nice. It wasn't nice. Every single time we've done it. Yeah. Right there, man. yeah. yeah. Every time. It was horrendous. You see the complications we face. The, the timber's brilliant. The, the, the superstructure caused us the issue on this one. The access for the RRV is trying to, as you see at that stage, this was, you know, when we were trying to take out the, he's laid the, the new ones through the forefoot. Now to try and get the timbers out, the old system, he's trying to edge through that. That would take him 25 minutes to get in position to do one lift. We soon scrapped that. We've we done two um, using that method, but it, the time consuming was just massive. So we, we sort of reverted to using the Ironman. We installed the timbers by Ironman. As you can see, it's a perfect system. They sat on these cleats held laterally um, and vertically with the only down mechanisms. Um, the set intervals, no no sort of components required on that one. So from that, from the system's point of view, it's fantastic. It's, it's the perfect one. Um, as you can see, it was, it was nice. That was the Saturday. Um, yeah, and just before the weather the came in. Yeah, <laughs> the wave started lipping over the top. <laughs> so, there you go. That's, it. that's obviously once the system's installed. That's the Sunday, um, and that's that's our guys addressing this sort of balancing approach um, manually. Well, that there we've we've got uh, so we've got some bespoke sort of componentry there. So the Holden Dow straps actually insulated because this particular location they've got track circuit issues, and obviously where the base plates were moving um, with the decay timbers etc track circuit drops, we have issues. So basically the insulation is it's about a five mil sheath around the edge, but it allows that protection, providing you're not beating the life out of it, it's it will stop that track circuit element. We've done it in a few locations, yeah, haven't we? Farns, it's, it's work. Farns Richmond, a few locations, <laughs> and it's touch wood, it's, it's still going, so. And there, that's the, that was the sort of finished product. As you last say, it, it couldn't have it couldn't have gone any better other than the weather. Um, as you can see, like Jake said, we've got old damage. We also pre-insulated the sort of J bars, um, which there's only one either end of that bridge. But there, you know, in normal circumstances, you would have that. But yeah, no, it was it was a nice job. It was a nice job. Um, give you some sort of insight. This is what with Jake. This is beyond me. Um, this is what Jake would produce. So we've got. This is the, the the blue line would be upon installation. Now, any budget we deliver, we do a pre-work one. So this will be done a pre-work. We do post installation, which is pre any traffic loading, and then post a, a week a week of traffic. Um, so we've got a sort of we can get an overview of where we are. The blue line shows you where we were at installation. So that's pre any traffic loading, and the post line is sort of post works and Obviously, we've done sort of. We've got a slight overlift. It's, it's so minimal, but we tend to do a slight overlift um, to sort of it, allow for any sort of settlement that, that, that can possibly occur. But that gives you some indication of where we were. We were it. saying before it does look slightly worse. It looks, it looks worse but than when we've done it. Yeah, it's only five mil increments, so yeah, we're talking yeah, like yeah. a mil and a half here. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's over what length? That is it. The bridge is. It'd be forty meters even length yeah. for the bridge. So either side of the bridge, ballasted approach is 40 metres, same as what survey we would have uh, partake in. And the timber's six, seven metres each, roughly, yeah. so it's 42 metres. So, yeah, roughly 100 metres. Hardwood. Hardwood. New yeah. system. New, new ones, yeah. yeah. Obviously, that gives you an indication. This is sort of part of our AMBAC process. So we've got a, a pre-DRV run, um, and you can see from there. It wasn't the renders prior to starting, but they, they were starting to get niggles. They're starting to get sort of near, near, near fault. So, you know, it sort of adjusts the system. Well, the main issue there was the decay timbers as well as the amount of packing. They sort of had non-compliant base plate packing under the timber, uh, as in under the base plates. The max yeah. 30 mil, yeah. that was in excess of 30 mil. So, seen better days.
uh, one of my nemesis bridges, Wandsworth Town. <laughs> yeah, I did. God, uh, I've lived with these all my life. So um, this this one was we had to stage this one when when we sort of spoke about this. I say it's, it's not. It was nothing nothing new to us, but we, we sort of had issues with this one. The problem with this with this system was that we we, we had no access. It's an open structure over the River Wandle. Um, once the track level walkways come out, it give us a 40 foot drop into the River Wandle, which is extremely tidal. At low tide, you'll have 18 inches. At high tide, you've got 15 metres water. Um, causes no end of problems for, for, the, for sort of security or any maintenance of the structure. Um, so yeah, it, 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 that that's the main issue. This was what we found when we done the survey, and it, it looks horrendous. I know it does. Um, but obviously, without being without being allowed to maintain it, there's nothing we can do with it because once we take to access any of the old and down mechanisms, it was sort of moldy component failure. Um, the old and down mechanisms, the timbers went were, were sort of spreading under load. Um, there was decay. Everything. It, it couldn't have been any more wrong with it. Um, but we, as a DU, we couldn't maintain it because we didn't have the facility to be able to work at high at that, that time. Um, and this is this was probably the one that sort of pushed everyone to sort of give us the specialist training. Um, so that's what we that's what we faced when we done the survey. This was our proposal, initial proposal, stage one. As you can see, that's what we had. That's the existing. So we had uneven uneven number of timbers. At some stage in this life, timber one had been split in half on the right hand leg. So we have five timbers on the right hand leg and four on the left. Um, the problem we had, the initial problem, was the extended fly end on the country end of the timber, um, which was causing this endless problem. Um, the, the fly end extended, I want to say, three and a half metres. There was only a metre of the, of the final pair of timbers on the actual main girder. Um, and with the holding down mechanism, all but failed on that. So that's what we face. So that's what we've done. First thing, you can see the extended fly end. That's where the structure starts. That's the main girder position. The whole length of that timber pretty much sat on ballast. Float. Unmaintainable. There's no way we can consolidate that. Um, nothing we could do with it. So it, did, it was heavily voiding, rotational issues, everything. It couldn't have been any worse. So that was our, our stage one. So what we what we chose to do, we sort of stripped out that that end pair of timbers to start with, exposed the sort of support system. This was the only support. It's a concrete block, um, based a metre off. So it, and that that block was just literally set on track ballast. So it, it was it was not doing anything really. So what we then done, we excavated down to sort of formation level of the fly end. Um, consolidated, give us sort of a geotech base, uh, drainage out to the cess, sort of improve the drainage, and then we installed additional six. Obviously, this is all through structures approval. Um, we cut the timbers back to just literally onto the abutment walls, um, so it, it, it gave us a, a fly end of now 18 inches two foot as opposed to three and a half meters. So. Everything was ballasted and sleepered on that end, and then manually consolidated upon completion. So the, the timbers at that stage were only installed because we knew we was going to change the whole system. The timbers at that stage were put back as softwood because um, the proposal was to change them out at a later date. That was stage two. So now, now we sort of face the sales with the issue. Uh, here we go, sales stage one. So this was the issue we sort of faced. Um, this this is more to give you. So stage two was to give ourselves the capability of having this this lower level GRP walkway installed. Um, that was our next point. It it saved us. Scaffold access was sort of ruled out because of the sort of severe tide tidal waters under. It's, it's impossible to build off a, a pontoon as they would normally do. So. Cost implications were massive. It was going to be off a barge, um, which could only work at high tide. So we sort of looked into it. With, again, working alongside structures, we installed the lower level working platform, which remains now as is. Um, and owned, owned by the DU 
and maintain by the DU. So we, that now forms part of our annual detailed inspection, this lower level working platform. So it gives us the capability, not only now, obviously now we've changed the system, we'd like to hope there's not going to be masses of work, but it gives us the option to use that as an inspection platform. So when we do our annual inspection, we can remove the top layer and we've got a, a walkway to inspect all three sides of that timber now. Obviously, the next stage was changing of the, 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 the entire system. Um, so we, we, we upgraded the whole of the, the whole of the structure, um, equaling out the timbers, changing out for hardwoods. So the, the system was installed as hardwood system now, and, and obviously track level walkways reinstated, uh, GRP. That was stage one, two, three. St yeah, stage four, the final stage for us was upgrading of the existing holding down assembly. The system didn't work. It, it's been adapted over the years. Um, you basically had these hook bars going underneath the structural fins, which once they were worked loose, there's no way you could maintain them. Um, it's impossible. So this was then sort of addressed structures. Structures led, they employed a, a contract company to sort of design and install the, the sort of new holding down captive nuts so we've now got a system we can maintain the track level at track level without the need to ever access the lower level um so that's that's basically what they come up with that was the design they come up with it give us an equal number of straps throughout the structure i'm waffling now i'm just looking at the time there <laughs> finally where we where we go from here this one's not one of ours thankfully and you know I'll, 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 I'll say that i'm glad we didn't do it and you know as a company, we're looking at alternatives to timber. Um, I think there's a sort of need to sort of look at, is it sustainable to, to sort of carry on using hardwood um, the way we do, um, or softwood? Softwood sort of come to the end of its life, I think now. Um, so, the, the, you know, the, this one, I'm not, in, personally, I'm not entirely sold on it, but FFU seems to be the first option we, we sort of looking at. Um, as a company, it's, it's a man-made sort of material. Um, it, it comes with its own sort of issues. Um, it, you know, the, the, the life expectancy is, is sort of being quoted around between 30 and 50 years currently. Um, so this, this was one we were sort of kindly given the opportunity to visit. Um, delivered by SRS and BAMS. Um, it was a complete renewal of the structure. As you can see, that's what they had in with the software system, longitudinal timbers on longitudinal girders. This was sort of changed out. Um, they removed all the timber system, packed out the sort of riveted main girders, if you like, to keep the weight off the rivets. Um, obviously, there's a need to, for them to do that. Um, and replaced it with the FFU units. Now these are obviously these are sort of pre pre cut pre ordered. Um, they 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 did you know the nice bit is with the see they've done the sort of transition slabs. They were all installed on the core weekends, um, along with this sort of they, they changed the system in that effectively they they sort of rotated the system. So now the the timber span from girder to girder. Um, it works. It works. You know. It, it, it comes with, like I say, it comes with its issues. But from from a maintainer's point of view, that's what they ended up with. They've done both roads. Um, and for, for anyone looking at it, they'd say, oh, it's lovely, it's fantastic. From my point, the first thing I look at with that is how, how the hell do I maintain that? How do I see it? How do I inspect or maintain it? It's impossible. Um, all these are injured. The decking is individually cut in between the in between the bearers. So for me, it's an absolute maintenance Can't get nightmare. Them out. No, I cannot get them out. They're full length sheets mm. from six to side to side. six foot, and the other row is exactly the same. So you you physically cannot take that decking out unless you was to cut the end off it potentially. Um, so yeah, it's it's a it's a maintainer's nightmare as far as I'm concerned that one. You know, but listen, the, the young is that the FFU does last. If it lasts 15 years, maintenance free, then they've got a good job. Um, but yes, yeah, that's that's. That seems to be the way we're going. So uh, that's us. That's us. Um, questions and answers, please. <laughs> please, sorry about.
at the time. Not, not Sorry about the time. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, if anyone's got a jersey, please feel free. Yeah, let's start with him. Yeah. yeah. If anybody wants to ask a question, if you can hear me, I'll just go I'll pick it up from the chat, otherwise I'll open it up for the room first. Um, so how well do you think they understand how they deteriorate to this Now, now. I did, and like I say, they, they, James Cook is more than more than expected. So I think we've sort of come a, we've come a hell of a way, um, especially with the tenure of the pro duo, etc. But what, you, what we need to understand is the pro duo is not a be-all and end-all. You know, we, we did, we saw, it's been highlighted more this year. We, we've probably been using it for two years because we was trialling it. Um, and what we sort of found was year one was a, an extremely wet weather year. Um, and it, the pro duo was showing less resistance because the timbers were saturated. Um, so we're getting a hell of a lot of sort of timbers that were coming up and we're saying, well, you know, there's a 50 to 80%. They're going the following year, where we, like this year, we've had a dry year. We're now getting on the same timber, drilling the same locations, we're getting 20% improvement. So we use it as a tool, it's a tool. As, as a company, we need to view it as a tool as opposed to a be all and end all. Obviously, the, the Trough timbers, as Jake said, they're the ones, they're the ones we rely on that the info from the project. So we use that more. That's more our indicator as opposed to the visual inspections. I think if you're if you're permanently in inspecting timbers, you get to know the type of timber, the age of it, and how it's going to deteriorate. Because a lot of the older softwood was imported, so that tended to last 25, 30 years. Whereas a new softwood these days, seven to ten if you're lucky. So I believe that if you're doing it, I've been doing it for four years and I'm confident that I could probably give a rough estimate on most timbers. Um, it's It does boil down to the weather, as Greg said. So if you're having harsh winters, harsh summers, it's going to potentially deteriorate a lot quicker. Um, but yeah, as a whole, it's, it's just maintaining it and looking at it visually a lot. So yeah. Two mil. Two mil diameter. Two mil, yeah. So yeah. It, it spins at a, such a quick revolution. So this is our question. We put hundreds of drills now into this. Are we deteriorating life? But IML, they've said that it spins that fast that it self seals it and the sawdust. Consumer. Yeah, carbonizes it. The sawdust does go back in the hole. And only now I would have trouble finding that hole next year because it's, it's next to impossible. So when I say we drill in the same location, obviously the base plate generally, unless we do a base plate change, the base plate spacing stay the same. So unless you're changing the system like we do in areas, then you would change your pattern. But nine times out of 10, you're hitting within 20 mil. They use yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, it's exactly the same. same. Slightly part. different. Oh, no, it is the same. No, it's the same. It's exactly the same, same yeah. But they've got different software. So they get a pass and a fail, whereas yeah. we don't get that. We just get... <laughs> make, make a decision. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. 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 In your opinion, what do we need to do in terms of the track structure and the cylinder materials in the system and the structures of interaction to improve things? The management of the system, like I say, I, I think if if we can get to extend the life, I, I think that's that's the key bit for for all of us is to sort of look at ways. I, I think we're now in a position. I, I speak for Wessex only, obviously, but I think we're in a position where we we now understand what we've got. We now understand the system as our, how it's working in relation to the structure, um, but we don't maintain it. And we, if we can get to the point where we're maintaining that system, um, that's where we need to be. Personally, I think um, we, it, it sort of gives us a far greater knowledge and understanding of track geometry, holding that track geometry, being able to maintain the track geometry through that structure and that system as a whole. Um, but you know, I did, you know, I think we need to look financially with. Moving forward with the FFU, um, if that's the way we're going to go forward, then we 
we need to look at again retraining how, how we inspect probably our, our biggest issue we'd have with that um in that the probe drill we use the current one doesn't work on doesn't work on every view gives you no response at all because it's not it's a man-made material um so we've, we've almost reverted back to being a visual inspection now with ffu units which is a bit of a concern for me um potentially we need we need to sort of look ultrasounding various sort of methods of sort of inspection how we do it so but yeah no nah. sorry what, what, what do you would you expect uh, to be a failure with the fail? I don't think we know. I don't, and, and that's a worry for me. I don't, as a company, I don't think we know our fails. We, we, obviously, from Sekasui, we've got their information and their, their sort of data sheets. Um, and the, the concern is that you've got this delamination of layers because it's block build units. So, effectively, network valves, I, 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 it, they buy. Eight metre lengths by 200 mil deep. Now, if you want a timber to 600 mil deep, they get three of the units and in, in crude terms, they glue them together. Um, obviously, that's the issue will come at, the, at that at that joint. Now, if we've got a timber, timber that's in the trough or it's spanning that we can't inspect, much like the one we got there, um, how do we see that delamination or how do we identify it? Um, and at the moment, I don't think we're in a position to know that, you know. They do. We're, we're definitely not, um, and we've, we've, you know, we've got very little understanding of failure mechanisms of the units as it stands. Question? Sorry, no. okay. okay. Um, having been involved with uh, with what the different players uh, back in the fifties, sixties, and seventies. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And there were a lot of them about it that time. Yeah. And, uh, how good or how bad some people were at being able to uh, solve the problems of that. Yeah. And, and they were for some people. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, it's nice to see that there is the, 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 the solutions that you've got now are, are, are beginning to produce exceptionally good track conditions over the actual uh, the actual structure itself. Systems and so on, choice of timber, the fastening systems and so on, all go to um, trying to make sure at least that you've got a good system. Yes, they do that. Um, I, I do follow your uh, last remarks about how on earth do we inspect that? Mm. Yeah. I'm sure we can get to that. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think, uh, yeah. The, the other the question really is that blocks is always the problem that's been the rubbing on and the rubbing yes. off. Yes. Yes. In other words, not the, not what you're doing over the structure, but yeah. the, the, the plate line and the and so on. Um, with the developments with sort of working with are you thinking about that sort of thing for the last sort of uh, 15 or 20 metres of either end of the, of the structure. I don't know where I, I yeah, I, I, obviously, I, I, it's not something that I would, I've sort of been, we'd, we'd, we've looked at potential, the, the structures team have sort of given us options for transition slabs in bread, which is pretty yeah, fast yeah, concrete, yeah, yeah. which, you know, you see that on the FFU one, it's, it's sort of, it's almost a transition slab, it's, you know, with a nice a bit extended further on. Um, but I think to have something going from rigid onto the I, I think the idea of that transition length is to ease that ease that knocking. Um, we did it at Wandsworth, the one at Wandsworth we did when we when we installed the system, the sort of we we got bearing strips below the holding down mechanism because that was one of our failure points where the where the loading was hitting the timber, it's almost rocking the whole system throughout its length, putting too much stress. So the first four timbers, four straps either end of the of each unit have, have now got this sort of bearing strip below so it takes out the sort of force to so spread the load slightly it's working at the moment for us um but yeah no it, it, it's not something we sort of it'd be lovely to be at that stage I don't think it, it does um, need it because that's that is still one of the main issues we face yeah. and we were literally saying this is what we're doing this weekend yeah, Scott. we were out 12 hour shifts doing the fly ends of bridges 
So it, the issue still remains. Uh, I think the main issue these days is the funding of the amount of bridges that we have to do that everywhere is going to be a hell of a lot of money. And I agree it needs it, but in reality, yeah, it's going to take a long, long time. It's a great sort of process of, of uh, literally packing the track up to each end of your, your mm -hmm. structure. Tampa can't do no, it properly. No, no. It yeah. has to run out before yeah, you can't can. get it. And yeah. it's also the wrong way around to the other end. Yeah, but exactly. Like, like we said earlier, the, the, yeah. the main thing we do need to get in is the the maintenance cyclical maintenance so at the minute we only currently maintain it when it's an issue mm. so we need to hit before it gets to that issue we need to be maintaining it cyclically if we know we've got a bad bridge or a bad fly end or bad run on run off we need to be there cyclically monthly two monthly whatever the possession allows to do that so we don't hit the level twos we don't hit the twist faults we don't hit the derailment risks ultimately so and it does then preserve the bridge because it's not getting an absolute battery when it comes on or off oh, don't, don't go down there <laughs> well, we'll very close to the time and we'll yeah wear out the belt from the back the sets and stuff so, uh, i would like to ask one question from the chat from james cormack james cormick sorry james um what survey methods do you use to create a working design i.e you using halal for alignment Level and start the top or a more modern method. Still old school. Yeah. <laughs> I, I even still do the design of graph package, Joe. Yeah. So yeah, it shows you where we are. Um, yeah, personally, it worked for me. Always has done. So you know, I, I, we will use for, we use a rotating laser for um, rail levels, etc. We use the root scan, obviously, for the sort of offsets and clearance issues, and halard for alignment. Yeah. We, we have got a uh, alignment wheel, so they're basically, it's like a field light straight. It's straight. It's fine on straight track, obviously, because it's a straight line. So you, we use it now and again on straight track. So you basically fix it either end to the foot of the rail, pull a string across, or a, a line it is, and then you set it either end to 100 mil, should we say, and then you've got exactly how much you need to slow it all the way through. Got the perfect. So straight track's easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the rest of it. So, I yeah. wish I could say that. I wish you could say that, of course. But yeah, no. Have we run out of time? I think we have really. But then it's just gone five o'clock. So yeah, apologies for others who ask asked, um, asked questions in the chat. I'll probably answer one or two based on the questions that you might have picked that up. But yeah, that seems that one. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Stay there for a moment, if you will. So um, I think you'll agree that was a fantastic presentation from the front line. I have one massive regret, which is that this meeting has only lasted an hour and it I would have been <laughs> <laughs> I have a huge list of questions to you know, I about all of those things that you were raising there Malcolm about what you think cyclic maintenance looks like about your point about getting better um, better uh, uh, arrangements for those structures interfaces there's all so much to think about here and uh, you've given us a fantastic uh, eye-opening view of it and it's uh, and I echo what Malcolm had to say it's great to see two professionals working in this area um, uh, and sustaining uh, the large number of bridges that we've got that have got this classing system so if you'd all like to join me in uh, uh, saying thanks very much and thank you. Thank you.